So given you've got many enzymes, you can do all sorts of things. And one of them is metabolism. That is the sum of all enzymes and reactions in your body. All right. That's biochem one. If you remember way back when I talked about you are what you eat. And so I want to give an example. Protein metabolism and phenyl ketone urea. That is PKU. And that's a genetic disease. And you probably have heard, we talk, I've talked about it a little bit before in class, and if you have drink diet soda, you'll see a warning about phenylketonurics to watch out for phenylalanine. Now I think you know what phenylalanine is. So now we can tie together what's going on, why that might be a worry. And in fact, actually, if I remember right, aspartame, the structure of it was on that sweets uh, problem that you did, that warm-up you did way long ago. If you look at aspartame, you can see that it actually contains phenylalanine in it, now that you know to recognize those structures. But anyway, um, how, does this all, how would this all work? So if you eat some protein in your food, right, the digestive enzymes in your stomach break it down to amino acids. So those are enzymes that catalyze um, hydrolysis. They break down amino acids, proteins into amino acids. In humans, what happens next is there's a whole lot of processing in your liver. Um, it's mostly interconversion. So your liver actually does a lot of really important stuff. Um, Basically, the extras are degraded and they end up in your urine. And then the right mixture goes into your, is, is amino acids in your blood and that goes into cells and becomes proteins needed for life, right? So, and these are cells in your body. Same story of breakfast. I'm a creature of habit. I had yogurt again for breakfast this morning. There's proteins in yogurt. My stomach has probably finished digesting them to free amino acids. They come in, in my intestines, which are then absorbed by the blood. Blood goes through the hepatic portal vein right into your liver. My liver is at the moment very busily deciding what to do with them, right? There's a particular mix that I need, which is not exactly the same as what I ate. Humans do not have the ability to store amino acids. So whatever I don't need, I degrade and I'll pass in urine sometime today. The stuff that I do need goes into my blood. And if I don't have, if I lack something, then I'm in trouble. I'll feel hungry or, at worst case, be malnourished. But any extras get passed in, degraded and passed in urine. And it turns out if you want to do a little bit of numbers, just roughly speaking, an adult male, human, um, you take in about 400 grams per day um, of protein turnover. I'll explain what that is. It's um, broken down and remade. So even though I'm not growing, about 400 grams of the protein in me in a given day gets broken down and rebuilt. So you're turning over stuff all the time. Stuff that you don't need anymore, stuff that's worn out, whatever. You're, you're turning over the proteins in your body. And roughly speaking, you eat about 150 grams a day. Therefore, you reuse about 250 grams per day. So I'm pretty efficient. I mean, I, I need to eat some, um, but I also reuse a lot. So a lot of me is just me getting recycled. So we can apply that 
to phenylalanine. Okay? Our old friend Phi, classic hydrophobic amino acid. Um, it's an amino acid, of course, and humans can't make phi from other amino acids. Therefore, it's an essential amino acid. That is, we must eat it. As humans as, as humans, as our most animals, are biochemically challenged, there's not a lot of amino acids we can make. So we depend on the things that we eat to make them. The plants, if we eat plants, or the animals that we eat, whatever we eat makes most of our amino acids for us. Um, so and phenylalanine is one of them. We can't make it on our own. We can't make it from any other amino acids. So we've got to depend on our prey, our dinner, or lunch or breakfast to make it for us. Okay? It turns out to do some numbers, which is relevant to where we're going next. So a normal, I'll put it in quotes because it varies a lot from person to person, protein diet is about two grams of phenylalanine per day. So in your normal diet, you eat about two grams of phenylalanine. You need about a half a gram per day to make proteins. Therefore, you must degrade about 1.5 grams per day to keep it, because you can't store it. Okay? So, a normal American diet, which is actually relatively protein rich, tends to contain about four times as much phenylalanine. Is it four times? Yeah, four times as much phenylalanine as you actually need. So, you throw away about a gram and a half of phenylalanine a day, which is fine. Everybody in this room does fine doing that. Um, and I want to show you, talk about how that happens, and then we talk about how, if you can't do that, that leads to a disease. So this degradation is done in your liver by an enzyme called phenylalanine hydroxylase. It's got the ACE ending, and it's called PAH for short. And it's in an enzymatic pathway, a series of enzymes that do a bunch of jobs. So it turns out you take phenylalanine plus oxygen plus some miscellaneous other molecules. PAH catalyzes the corrosion of that into tyrosine plus water plus some other MISC molecules. And then other enzymes turn it into miscellaneous molecules, which you're not going to worry about, which end up in your urine. Right? So all of us are sitting here right now because we probably ate more protein than we, more phenylalanine than we needed, and our livers are busy. Saving what, taking what we need and sending it off in your blood, but the excess, which in most people is quite a bit of what you've eaten, we're degrading it, physically turning it into tyrosine, then the tyrosine gets turned into something else, by another enzyme, something else, something else, and to finally something you can pass as urine. Yeah? Is it better to have more or less le left over? I suppose, strictly speaking, it's better to have less left over, but it turns out, in, um, in everybody in this room, unless you're a phenylketonuric, which you would know, I, I think you were, most of them are very rare, it's fine. There's plenty of things your body does for you you don't have to worry about, basically. We're all cool with that. It's not, you have plenty of capacity, it turns out. So a couple facts, and then we can talk disease. Insufficient phenylalanine, a starvation, can lead to death because you can't make the proteins you need. On the other hand, excess phi, phenylalanine in your blood, can lead to brain damage. Too much of a good thing. Therefore, it's carefully regulated. Phenylketonuria, 
I know I've got a lot to say today, but it's, we can tie a bunch of pieces together. So it's worth doing. Is an inherited intolerance of phenylalanine. That's the warning on soda cans. It's autosomal. Um, recessive. Okay. And so, if you have the disease and you eat a normal phenylalanine diet, you end up with brain damage. So it's serious business. And we can make an allele, go back to genetics again, contribution And then PAH enzyme encoded by that allele. It's a disease of that particular protein. So big D is normal and dominant. This makes functional phenylalanine hydroxylase. Little d makes causes a PKU disease, and that's recessive. And this makes non functional PAH. All right. So you might ask, and now we're in a position to explain, why is this recessive? Okay. So in genetics, we would have just said the first half of that table. Big D, normal, dominant, the disease is recessive. But I couldn't tell you why. It just is recessive. That's just a fact. So let's, it's one of these things I'm going to ask people to talk to their neighbors to explain. So let's get this piece by piece. So genotype and phenotype. First, we'll do a shout out. If you got big D, big D, I'm sorry, I'll put it this way, that you want to make the PAH enzyme and the phenotype. Right? This is going to be 100% functional. And the phenotype is normal. Right? What about little d, little d? What kind of enzyme are you going to... If you're a little d, little d person, what kind of enzyme are you going to have in your liver? Non-functional. Is there going to be any functional enzyme in your liver? No, because all you know how to make, your two copies of the gene for this enzyme make dud enzyme, right? So that, that you've got lots and lots of genes in your body. They make all sorts of enzymes. The one that we care about for this thing, you got one allele from mom that makes a, an enzyme that doesn't work, and you got another allele from dad that makes an enzyme that doesn't work. So you have 0% functional um, or 100% non-functional. As a result, you have PKU because you can't, you can't, degrade phenylalanine so it builds up up in your blood which leads to brain damage. Fortunately, if you eat a low phenylalanine diet, you can be normal. All right? It's really a bummer. You basically eat protein shakes, okay? Very carefully formulated with a very small amount of phenylalanine. Basically, you eat a half a gram of phenylalanine a day and no more. If you do that, your phenylalanine level stays fine. You don't die of starvation and you don't get brain damage. It's a drag. It's not fun. You can't go and have a steak, but, but you'll be fine for your life. Um, that's why those people have to worry about um, diet soda. Diet soda can contain... 50 to 100 milligrams of phenylalanine in one can. If your daily budget is 500 milligrams, one can of diet soda is a quarter, a fifth of your daily phenylalanine budget. So it makes so you have to watch it. It could put you over and into a situation where you're in trouble. So that's why there's that warning on those cans because if you have it, it's fine. Uh, it's not fine. It's, it can be quite dangerous. So the next thing I want to ask is, and it's the usual thing, I want to know for big, the big... The, the interesting one, big D, little d, and talk to your neighbor. What enzymes are going to be present in, the, in a big D, little d individual? And I've told you they're going to be normal. So 
So can you come up with an explanation for why, a speculation, on why a big D, little d would be normal? Because that's what it means for the DDs to be recessive. You've got a big D, you're going to be normal. Right? So what enzymes have you got, and why would that make you normal? So think about it, talk to your neighbor. We'll call names. Yeah. That's about as far as that's as far as I can go and not have and keep up what I need. All right. Oops, sorry everybody. Put that back. Come on. All right. All right so a consensus. And then uh, I'll call a name. All right. So, Dat, are you here, Dat? Yes. So, first of all, what kind of proteins would you expect to find big D, little d? Both functional and non-functional. Roughly speaking, how much of each? Equal amounts, different amounts? Exactly. Equal amounts. Because it, the law says it's... Thank you, Dat. Um, we'll come back to you for the... The next, or so the law says all it's, uh, it's co dominant at the protein level, so both alleles do their thing 50% functional and 50% non functional. So this guy is going to make that one, and the little d makes that one, and this one is normal. So, yeah, you want to go for an explanation for why is it normal? Because it still has the functional enzyme. That's exactly right. Okay? And so I want to unpack that a tiny bit. So this has got 50% normal level of enzymes. And those people are totally normal. They can drink as much diet soda as they like. The answer is, exactly as Dad was saying, is that, to put it in slightly different words, why a normal is that 50% normal level of PAH is enough to uh, degrade phenylalanine in a normal diet. So you can be a carrier of, phen of, of PKU, phenylketonuria, and not know it at all. You would never see any symptoms because 50% uh, is enough. Basically, the idea is that Enzymes are so good at what they do that having 100, that 50% of the level is plenty. And that turns out to be true for most enzymes. For most enzymes, for most enzymes, 50% is plenty to do the job. And there are two reasons for that. Because enzymes are really fast, number one, and enzymes can be, or I guess I'll just say it that way, that the enzymes are really fast. So basically, that, that you, have, you have excess capacity. Right? And here, doing something, in this case, breaking down phenylalanine, is dominant to not. Okay. Questions about that? And this explains why most genetic diseases are recessive. Most of them are enzyme deficiencies. And so in most cases, having 50% of the normal level is plenty. And so it covers for you. So you end up the disease, you have to knock out both copies to have a disease. Um, 
All right. So let me do the clicker question, and we'll call it a day. Somebody on Twitter asked me to slow down. I'm sorry about that. If you, if I lost you, I hope you get a chance to listen to the lecture audio and look at the notes online.